Imagine watching a loved one suffer day after day, their quality of life deteriorating before your eyes. It's a situation that forces us to confront the darkest corners of our emotions and beliefs. The question arises, is it ever right to wish for their death to end their pain? This topic, steeped in sensitivity and taboo, demands our attention and a compassionate exploration of its profound implications. What is the emotional toll of caregiving? Caregiving is often portrayed as a noble and selfless act, but behind the scenes, it can be a harrowing experience fraught with emotional and physical challenges. Personal stories reveal the intense struggles caregivers face daily. One such story involves a daughter caring for her mother with multiple debilitating conditions. Every request for help is met with negativity and criticism, leaving the daughter feeling unappreciated and emotionally drained. Another caregiver shares the relentless nature of looking after a spouse with Alzheimer's. The disease has transformed their once loving partner into a stranger prone to aggressive outbursts. The emotional toll of watching a loved one decline, coupled with the constant demands of caregiving, creates a perfect storm for what is known as caregiver burnout. Caregiver burnout is more than just feeling tired. It is a state of physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion that can lead to a range of severe health problems. Burnout can cause caregivers to experience symptoms of depression and anxiety, disrupt their sleep patterns, and even lead to chronic health conditions like hypertension and diabetes due to prolonged stress. The impact on mental health is profound. Many caregivers report feelings of isolation, hopelessness, and guilt. They are torn between their duty to care for their loved ones and their need for rest and reprieve. The physical strain of caregiving is equally severe. Tasks like lifting and moving patients, managing household chores, and attending numerous medical appointments can take a toll on the caregiver's body. This physical exhaustion often compounds the emotional strain, creating a vicious cycle that is hard to break. In summary, the emotional toll of caregiving is immense, encompassing a broad spectrum of challenges that can lead to significant physical and mental health issues. Now, let's explore the ethical and moral dilemma a caregiver may face. When it comes to the question of whether it's ever right to wish for someone's death, opinions are sharply divided. On one hand, proponents argue that wishing for death can be an act of compassion. They believe that in cases of extreme suffering, death may be the most humane release from relentless pain and declining quality of life. This perspective is often supported by those who have witnessed their loved ones endure prolonged agony feeling that ending this suffering is a final act of kindness. On the other hand, opponents argue that wishing for someone's death crosses a moral line. They hold that life is sacred and should be preserved regardless of the circumstances. This viewpoint is frequently rooted in religious and ethical beliefs that emphasize the inherent value of human life. For instance, many religious doctrines consider life to be a divine gift that only a higher power has the right to end. From this standpoint, the act of wishing for death can be seen as playing God, which is ethically unacceptable. Philosophers and ethicists have long debated this issue. Utilitarian philosophers, such as John Stuart Mill, might argue that the greatest happiness principle justifies wishing for death if it ends severe suffering. Conversely, Deontological ethicists, following the teachings of Immanuel Kant, would assert that we have a moral duty to preserve life and that wishing for death violates the intrinsic worth of a person. Incorporating religious viewpoints adds further complexity. For example, Christian teachings often emphasize the sanctity of life, suggesting that only God can decide when a life should end. However, some interpretations of Buddhism may support the idea that death can be a release from suffering, aligning with a more compassionate view. Personal stories and opinions vividly illustrate these ethical dilemmas. One caregiver expressed profound guilt, yet admitted, 
I wish for her peace, even if it means death. Another person, deeply religious, countered. It's not our place to wish for death. Only God decides. These contrasting perspectives highlight the deep ethical conflict inherent in this issue. Ultimately, the ethical and moral dilemma of wishing for someone's death is a profound and deeply personal debate. It challenges our beliefs about life, suffering, and our role in determining the end of life. This leads us to consider the critical aspect of quality of life versus prolonged suffering. Quality of life is crucial when discussing end-of-life care, both for the patient enduring the suffering and for the caregiver providing constant support. Quality of life encompasses physical comfort, emotional well-being, social engagement, and autonomy. When these elements are severely compromised, life can become an unbearable burden rather than a precious gift. A decline in quality of life can manifest in many ways for patients. Physical pain, loss of mobility, and the inability to perform basic tasks without assistance can strip away their dignity. Emotional distress, depression, and feelings of isolation often accompany severe physical decline. Imagine an elderly parent confined to a bed, plagued by chronic pain and unable to enjoy the simplest pleasures of life. Such a scenario illustrates how a prolonged life without quality can cause prolonged suffering. Caregivers, too, experience a profound impact on their quality of life. They often face overwhelming stress, fatigue, and emotional exhaustion. The relentless demands of caregiving can lead to burnout, making it difficult for them to maintain their health and well-being. One caregiver described the toll vividly. Every day is a struggle. I barely sleep, constantly worry, and have no time for myself. It's like my life has stopped. Cases where prolonging life leads to more suffering are not uncommon. For instance, patients with advanced dementia often endure years of mental and physical decline. They may no longer recognize their loved ones or participate in meaningful activities. A caregiver shared a poignant story. My mother has dementia. She doesn't know who I am and is often agitated. Keeping her alive feels like prolonging her torment. Another example involves terminal cancer patients who endure aggressive treatments that offer little hope of recovery, but cause significant pain and suffering. His wife expressed it this way. Watching my husband go through chemo was heartbreaking. It didn't give him more life, just more suffering. These stories underscore the need to balance the desire to preserve life with the reality of prolonged suffering. They highlight the importance of considering quality of life in end-of-life care decisions and prioritizing patients' and caregivers' dignity and well-being. With this understanding, we can explore the complex emotions caregivers face when balancing the guilt and relief dichotomy. Caregivers often navigate a complex emotional landscape marked by intense feelings of both guilt and relief. These seemingly contradictory emotions are a natural response to the immense pressures and responsibilities of caregiving. Guilt arises from the deep-seated sense of duty and love that caregivers feel towards their loved ones. They may question whether they are doing enough or feel remorseful for wishing an end to their loved one's suffering. I felt guilty for wanting my mother's suffering to end. I questioned my compassion and wondered if I was a terrible person. This guilt is compounded by societal expectations that caregivers should be unwaveringly selfless and strong. Relief, on the other hand, comes from the cessation of the overwhelming burden that caregiving often entails. After years of providing constant care, managing medical appointments, and witnessing their loved ones decline, caregivers can feel a profound sense of release when the ordeal finally ends. This relief is not about wishing harm, but the end of suffering for both the patient and themselves. When my father finally passed, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. It wasn't that I wanted him gone. I couldn't bear to see him in pain any longer. 
Individuals handle these feelings of guilt and relief differently, often depending on their beliefs, support systems, and coping mechanisms. Some find solace in support groups, where sharing their experiences with others in similar situations helps them understand that their feelings are valid and common. Others turn to counseling or spiritual practices to reconcile their emotions. To sum up, the guilt and relief dichotomy is a fundamental aspect of the caregiving experience. Understanding and acknowledging these emotions as natural responses can help caregivers navigate their complex emotional journeys and find the support they need. Now, let's explore the societal and familial expectations placed on caregivers. Caregivers often face immense pressure from societal and familial expectations, significantly impacting their roles and decisions. Society glorifies caregiving as an unwavering sacrifice, creating pressure to meet high standards at the expense of personal well-being. Family dynamics add further complexity. Differing opinions on care can lead to conflicts and stress for the primary caregiver. My siblings wanted to pursue every possible treatment for our mother, regardless of the toll it took on her and me. These pressures can heavily influence end-of-life decisions, often compelling caregivers to opt for extensive medical interventions to avoid being perceived as neglectful. This can lead to prolonged suffering for the patient. I felt guilty considering hospice care for my father because my family viewed it as giving up. Coping with these pressures varies. Some families find strength in open communication, holding meetings to align on care decisions and distributing the emotional and physical burden more evenly. Others seek external support, like counseling or mediation, to navigate conflicts and expectations. Talking to a counselor helped me set boundaries and communicate more effectively with my family. Societal and familial expectations profoundly impact caregivers often complicating end-of-life care decisions. Given these challenges, advocating for open and compassionate discussions about end-of-life wishes is crucial. Families should discuss end-of-life preferences early and revisit them regularly to reduce uncertainty and conflict. Healthcare providers should initiate these conversations and offer guiding resources. Supporting caregivers demands a multifaceted approach access to counselling and support groups, respite care services for breaks, and flexible work arrangements with paid leave to prevent burnout. Policy changes are crucial. Expanding palliative and hospice care ensures compassionate patient care. Financial support, like tax credits or stipends, can ease the economic burden on caregivers. Healthcare systems should train professionals in end-of-life care and establish standardized advanced care planning protocols to respect patients' wishes. In conclusion, caregiving brings immense emotional challenges, ethical and moral dilemmas, and complex decisions about the quality of life versus prolonged suffering, compounded by societal and familial expectations. We must address these issues with sensitivity and empathy. Open, compassionate conversations can honor the wishes of those nearing the end of their lives and support caregivers through their journey. Let's keep this important conversation going. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Your insights can make a real difference and help others navigate these difficult decisions.